Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today, we are continuing Con Marie with me, but we're moving over to my contemporary shelves. And we're gonna tackle a contemporary shelf, so let's get into it. If you don't know, I have been really hard at work on my bookshelves. I have completed a bookcase. It looks wonderful now. I, I, when I go to it, it just, it makes me so happy. And the whole point of this Conray with me thing is that I was going to my bookshelves and being like, I am overwhelmed. I don't like the look of it. And I just wasn't inspired. And so I wanted to dwindle stuff down keep the books that bring me joy, get rid of the rest. I do have some rules for myself. Now on my old bookshelf, um, I was going shelf by shelf and I would have to dwindle each shelf down to 20 books. Now those shelves usually I'd have like max 30 books on there, like max. Um, usually it would be like 25 books that I'd be going through. On these shelves, as you can see, they're a little bit bigger. And so they can fit around 37 books on each shelf. 37, 38 books. So I got to increase that number from 20 a little bit further up. I think I've settled on 25 because I do want to be quite ruthless. Now the other little thing about this is that I can put two books on my limbo shelf or now the limbo shelf is on the floor. So I can put two books over there. Um, and then if I go over 25, if I'm like, no, I have to keep this or that book. And I've got like 26 books now on one of these shelves, then I've got to go to my limbo pile and ditch one from there. So it's got to balance out some way. Part of the reason that I chose 25 in particular is because I'm hoping to be a little ruthless with my limbo shelf. I will get to my limbo shelf in the long run and we'll like go through that as well and see what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. So we are working on my contemporary shelf right here. Uh, sorry if you can hear a lot of noise outside. It's raining like cats and dogs out there. Um, I've got 35 books that I need to get through and I've got to dwindle it down to 25. So wish me luck. First up is The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. This follows uh, a young man, he's in college, um, and he's tasked to interview a stranger um, and write like a very short biography. And so he goes to an old age home and he meets a man who is a dying vet uh, Vietnam veteran and also a convicted murderer. And it's about their experience and their relationship. I don't think I want to read this. I don't. I'm going to get rid of it. Starting out strong. Next up is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This is a very much a love it or hate it book, like 100%. I've heard that this can be very depressing. Like you just feel sad reading the whole thing. Um, it's about um, a man named Jude um, and his, his, um, his, life um, which I think has a lot of trauma in it and it's about him and his friends. What I've heard about this is that the characters are really really well developed and you just care so much about all the characters. I really want to keep this. One day I'm going to read it. It's a chunker so I don't know when that will be but I'm going to keep it. Swimming Lessons is up next by Claire Fuller. This is about a woman whose mother disappeared um, when she was a child and she goes to these bookcases and she finds all of these letters I think written to her dad um, and she finds all of these letters and explores like what this actually meant did her mother just leave what was going on um, I thought I think this is so interesting so I'm gonna keep this please look after mom is about a woman who disappears. She's 69 years old and she's separated from her husband um, in a subway station. 
in Seoul and their family are like desperately trying to find her and they need to ask the question how well did they know their own mother this is super interesting I am gonna maybe put this on the limbo pile just just kind of think on this my name is Leon is about uh, a little boy named Leon and his younger brother Jake um, he's very protective of his younger brother and I think they go into the foster care system which is not an easy place for them. Uh, I really, really want to read this, so I'm going to keep it. A Tale for the Time Being uh, takes place in the Pacific Northwest, and this Hello Kitty lunchbox washes ashore, and it is from Japan. It's from the tsunami um, that happened. Um, and there's, I think, a little diary inside, and our main character starts to read the diary. And I... I just, I don't know what it is about this book, but I do love a good diary story. Uh, I really need to keep this one. Next is The Best Kind of People. This is about a man who's a teacher, a husband, a father, and then he's suddenly arrested for sexual imp impropriety at a prestigious prep school. And it's about the family's reaction to that. I just don't want to read this. There's nothing about this that's calling out to me, so I'm going to let it go. Next is Inside the O'Briens. This is about a man who works on the Boston Police Force. Um, suddenly he starts having these like physical reactions, um, outbursts, involuntary movements, and they get the diagnosis that he has Huntington's disease and it's about his experience with Huntington's disease. I'm not sure about this. I'm going to put it on the limbo pile and see where it lands in the end. Shelter was amazing. I loved this book. It's about a couple. Um, they're trying to sell their house because they're not doing well financially. The man in this family looks out the window and there's his mom like stark naked with blood all over her and he needs to find out what happened to her. Um, it sounds like a thriller. This is more like family drama. Than anything else but I really loved this book and I'm not parting with it. Gilead by Marilyn Robinson is um, a story about a father and his son and his love for his son. I read this a couple of years ago now, um, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I didn't love it. It was fine. I enjoyed it but I don't need this so I'm gonna let this go. An American Marriage by Tariari Jones. Uh, this is about a couple, a black couple. Um, the husband in this couple is wrongly convicted of rape. Like the couple know that this did not happen. And he goes to jail and it's about how that affects the family. I really want to keep this for sure. Where'd you go Bernadette is up next. This is a family comedy drama about a 15 year old. She gets um, this great trip to the Antarctic um, and she is going to take her whole family, uh, including her agoraphobic mother, Bernadette. Um, but then Bernadette like vanishes. She runs away and they're trying to find her. Um, I'm going to put this on my limbo pile because I just don't know if this is for me or not. Firefly Lane is next by Kristen Hanna. This is about um, fr a friendship in high school that blossoms in high school and like ex expands like decades and decades. Um, and then something happens in their adult lives that like ruins the friendship or, or really tests the friendship. I want to keep this because it just sounds like such a great summer read. So I'm keeping this. Next up is The Language of Flowers. This is about a girl who was raised in the foster care system and she has developed this appreciation of flowers. She works with flowers and she kind of um, communicates via flowers. Um, I don't know that I want to read this if I'm being honest. I think I might just want to let this one go. It just doesn't scream or call out to me, so I'm gonna let it go. Bridget Jones's Diary, I love this book. I know it's, I feel like it's a love it or hate it book. You either love Bridget or you don't, and I really do love Bridget. She is funny and sometimes ridiculous and sometimes quite sad, uh, but I liked it, so I'm keeping it. 
the 100 year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared this is about a man who uh now lives in a retirement home it's his 100th birthday and there's like tons of family and friends there and he just decides to leave <laughs> he leaves and goes on a little adventure of his own um I think this just sounds so interesting. I'm going to keep this because just there's something about it that sounds sweet, but also I think we can really underestimate and I don't know. A lot of people can talk down to older people, even though they have lived through so much. Um, so I think I want to keep it. Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. This has a lot of Big Little Live vibes. Um, but this one takes place at a barbecue and all of these couples get together at this barbecue and something goes down at the barbecue that changes everything. And I just, I really like Leanne Moriarty's writing. It's really fun. It's so easy to flip through. So I'm going to keep this one. Lillian Boxfish takes a walk. Um, this is about a woman named Lillian. Uh, she's 85 years old. She lives in New York. Um, and she is reminiscing about her earlier days um, in the 1930s when she wrote copy for Macy's. This one I do find kind of curious and interesting. I want to know what happened in her past, so I think I'm going to keep this one. Next up is Jeanette Walls, um, The Silver Star. This is fiction. She's written a lot of nonfiction, um, but this is about two girls uh, in the 70s. Um, they live in California and their mom kind of vanishes on them. She gives them some money but vanishes. One day they come home, there's a cop car outside. They decide to just leave and go and find their uncle and stay with their uncle. And it's about their adventure and their experience. And I want to keep it because I just love, I loved The Glass Castle. When God Was a Rabbit by Sarah Winman. There's not a lot on the back. This is a book about a brother and a sister and childhood. Um, more than anything, it's a book about love in all its forms. There's not a lot on the back, but I really want to read this. It's Sarah Winman, so I'm keeping it. Yes. One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, I've read Daisy Jones and the Six. I've read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think I prefer, I haven't read this, but I think I would prefer her historical fiction than this. I just read a little bit of it and it, I know, I, I don't mean to use the word chiclet in a disrespectful way, but it's just very light. It seems very, very light and I just don't really want to read this. I think I just want to read her historical fiction stuff instead. So I'm going to let this go. And here's another, maybe in another life. Um, this follows a girl who um, basically it, it follows two avenues of how her life could have been. One where she goes to this party and leaves with an ex and one where she goes to this party and leaves with her friend. Um, I, I again, I just don't think, I, I wanted to think that Taylor Jenkins Reid would like completely be for me, but I, I just don't really want it. So I'm going to let it go. Bridget Jones and the, and the Edge of Reason I'm keeping. Now, I loved Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. This is so good. This takes place in South America um, where there's this big, big party that is being held in honor of this really powerful business uh, man. Um, unfortunately, he actually doesn't show up, but a bunch of gun-wielding terrorists do. They take the party hostage and we meet a bunch of people at the party. I really loved this book and I'm keeping it. A Visit from the Goon Squad. I don't actually know if this is from me. Um, this is very well loved um, and it follows a punk rocker and a record executive. Um, I imagine that, you know, if you like Daisy Jones and the Six, this might be a thing, I don't know. I'm gonna put this on my limbo pile because I just, don't know. The Lowland is next by Jim Philip Lahari. Um, this follows two brothers in wake of a very terrible tragedy. And we move from the 1960s to present, from India to America. 
And I really do want to keep this because I've heard a lot of great things about this author and I've never read anything by her. So I want to give her a shot. Next up is Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is about um, a teenage girl. She's 15 and she has a father who's kind of domineering. She ends up actually going to live with her aunt um, and she loves every moment of that and it's about family and dynamics and I want to keep this. The Woman Who Walked Into Doors by Roddy Doyle. I read this in high school and I really loved it. It's about abuse, um, domestic abuse and, and how difficult that is. I think I have the sequel somewhere on the shelf as well. Um, so I'm going to keep this because it, it has a lot of memories for me. Next up is Hand Me Down World. I've tried to read this before and um, I got quite far in, but I there must have been a reason that I didn't finish it. I'm going to just get rid of it because it just, I don't think it was like pulling me in. So I'm just going to get rid of it. Stay With Me. This is about a couple um, who are really struggling with infertility. His family decides that he should take on another wife and it really impacts their marriage. Like he does take on another wife and they had always agreed that they would not do that. Um, even though this is like, I think fairly normal in their culture. Um, but yeah, it really tests their marriage. Um, I want to keep this. I've gone through infertility. I really need to keep this. Extremely loud and incredibly close. This is about a little boy. He's nine years old. His father died during 9-11. He finds this key that his father had and he's like got this miss mission for himself to find out what it unlocks. It's, uh, I, this is gonna break my heart, but I'm 100% keeping it. Rules of Mal Magic, not Malik. The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman is a sequel to Practical Magic. Now I enjoyed this book, but I don't think I need it on my shelves anymore. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just gonna let this go and let someone else read it. Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Again, I desperately want to keep this. Um, this follows a specific time um, in African history. There's the struggle to establish an independent republic in southeastern Nigeria during the late 1960s. And we follow people um, in that setting. Um, I'm going to keep this because I just, I think she's such a gorgeous writer and just how her mind works. Yeah, I'm keeping it. The Accidental by Ali Smith. This is about um, a woman who kind of just shows up at the summer house um, and they let her in even though no one knows her. Um, I'm just going to let this go. I don't think this is for me. Next up is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. This is about a man who goes to the mailbox. Um, gets a letter in the mail and decides to keep on walking. I think he's going to help a friend and I want to keep this. Like Water for Chocolate. I think I'm really curious about this one. It's a novel in monthly installments with recipes, romances, and home remedies. I'm just curious and I just want to know so I'm going to keep it. So I am unhauling nine books. I've also got four four books that I need to go through for my limbo shelf um, and decide what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. I'm going to keep Please Look After Mom because I've heard good things. I think I'm just going to get rid of Inside the O'Briens. I don't know what it is about this book, but I'm just not super drawn to it. I think I want to keep Where'd You Go, Bernadette? It's not, it just seems like a good summer read and I think it's supposed to be funny. So. I'm gonna keep this one. And then for my limbo pile, because I still can't decide, is a visit from the Goon Squad. I always feel like when things win, I think this won the Pulitzer at one point, when things win big awards, I'm like, oh, I gotta read them. But I don't always get on with that. So I don't know if this is for me or not. I'm gonna put it on my limbo pile. And that's that. So I did well, I got rid of 10 books. I had 35. Um, now I'm down to 24. It had to come down to 25 because this one is going on my limbo shelf. Um, yeah, I brought it down to 24, which is fantastic. Well done me. 
So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you would have gotten rid of or did I get rid of anything that you were like, no, I mean, it's already gone. It's already off my shelves. But uh, I am always curious what you guys like and what you would ditch. Um, but we'll talk soon. Okay, bye.